Hi. Now what I've got here is another question in my series on using the SUVAT equations. Remember they're the equations that uh, we can use for constant acceleration. And in this example what I've got is motion on a horizontal plane. So what we've got here is a stone slides across a sheet of ice and passes through a point A, moving with a velocity of 12 meters per second. And it passes also through a point B two seconds later. Assuming that the acceleration is constant and that the distance AB is 20 meters, find the deceleration, the velocity at B, and the distance traveled by the stone from A until it comes to rest. Okay, so you might like to have a go at this question and uh, come back when ready and uh, see if your working matches up with mine. Okay, well let's see how you got on if you did have a go. So what I would want to do first of all is draw a quick sketch. So it would be something like uh, a horizontal line here. I'd have my points on it where the stone passes, let's say A and B. Okay, and uh, could draw on a stone, I suppose. Let's just have a particle like that. And we need a positive sense throughout this problem. Okay, if you're doing any SUVAT uh, question, I'd always encourage you to write down a positive sense. So we've got the fact that as the stone passes through A, it's moving with a velocity of 12 meters per second. So I'll just mark that in. We know it travels a distance 20 meters from A to B, so we could just put that in as 20 meters from there to there. And we also know that it passes B two seconds later. So I think what I'll do, we'll put T equals two at this point here. Now it's going to be slowing down and so therefore its velocity is going to be changing. So I'm going to mark in an acceleration arrow in that sense, okay, a double arrow and that will call A, A meters per second per second. And we've got to find out what the deceleration is. So in other words, if we find out the acceleration because it's slowing down, I would expect A to come out as a negative answer. And then we can take the magnitude of that and get the deceleration. So to start off, because we're dealing with constant acceleration, I can write down my values for S, U, V, A and T. And what are those values? S is the displacement, U the initial velocity, V the final velocity, A the acceleration, and T the time. Well, we know that the displacement S is going to be 20 meters. It'll be the same as the distance travel because it's moving in the positive sense. U the initial velocity, well, that would be 12 meters per second. The final velocity, well, we don't know that at the moment. Acceleration, well we've got to find that. And t, the time, we know that it's two seconds. So in order to get the acceleration we need a SUVAT equation that doesn't involve v. So what's it going to be? Well the one that we would use would have to be s equals ut plus a half at squared. So all we need to do is put in our values. We've got S as 20 equals U, which is 12, times the time T, which is 2. Then we've got plus a half A, A we don't know, times T squared, 2 squared. So if we work this out, we've got, therefore, 20 equals, well, 12 twos are 24, and then we've got half of 4, which is 2, so we've got plus 2A. Take away 24 from both sides, that gives us minus 4 equals 2a. So we'll just come down here and complete it off. We've got therefore minus 4 equals 2a 
divide both sides by 2 and you end up with the acceleration a being minus 4 divided by 2 which is minus 2 minus 2 meters per second per second so we expected the negative because we know it's slowing down so when it comes to the deceleration let's just write it in therefore the deceleration it's going to be the magnitude of the acceleration so it's going to be slowing down at a rate of 2 meters per second per second okay well that was part A let's move on to part B part B we've got to find the velocity at B so that's going to be a final velocity here so I would want to use the letter V for final velocity but I'm going to put a subscript in. I quite often do that. It tells me the final velocity at B. So it's going to be VB meters per second. So how am I going to find out that final velocity at B? Well, we need to find a SUVAD equation that involves getting V. Well, I could use V equals U plus AT here. Okay, nice easy equation to use. And so we would therefore have the final velocity would be V at B equals the initial velocity, that's 12, plus the acceleration. Be careful here because the acceleration, got to use the minus 2, not the 2. Okay, so you've got minus 2 times the time, which was 2. So we end up with 12 minus 4, which is 8. 8 meters per second. So I just put that VB back in there. Okay, so that's that done. We move on now to part C. And for part C, we'll just come down here. We want to know how far the stone travels then before it comes to rest. Well, let's say it comes to rest way down here at a point, say, C. Let's just mark that in there as C, put the stone in there, and we'll put the velocity on here. It's come to rest, so that's going 0 meters per second. The acceleration would also remain exactly the same from A to C it's constant acceleration so that will always be minus 2 so in order to get AC let's just write out our values for SUVAT SUVAT again okay so if we consider AC let's just also mark in that we're doing AC here so S what would that be well that's what we're trying to find so We'll just call it AC. U, the initial velocity, well that's going to be 12 meters per second. V, the final velocity, well that's going to be zero. So zero meters per second. Acceleration, I said earlier, it remains constant all the way through the motion, so that's going to be the minus two. Minus two meters per second per second. Time, well we don't know that. Okay, so uh, we can forget about that. So we're looking for an equation that doesn't have t in it. So what would we use? Well, from this point of view, it's got to be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So if we use that, v, the final velocity, is 0. Square it, you're going to have 0 still. And that's going to equal u squared, so that's 12 squared, plus 2 times the acceleration which we said was minus 2 times s and s is the distance we want to find ac let's just put that in brackets there so we've therefore got 0 equals 12 squared which is 144 minus 4 ac so if we rearrange this by adding 4 ac to both sides and then dividing by 4 you end up with AC equaling 144 divided by 4, which works out very nicely that AC equals 36, 36 meters. Okay, well I hope you had some success then with uh, that uh, question if you had a go at it. Um, if not, uh, 
hopefully you understand how to do it. Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this example.